Hello, 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 welcome. Uh, welcome to Maths. It's Wednesday. It's Mr. Shield here. Hello, hello, hope you're well. Hope you're all right wherever you are. Hope you're doing good. It's Maths time, and this video is to take you through this Maths lesson, help you uh, understand the kind of concepts behind it, and um, give you any support you might need, okay? So today's Maths lesson is about moving on a grid. Hopefully, technology's working uh, well, and you'll be able to see uh, the flip chart in front of me, Maths moving on a grid uh, with uh, some shapes there, and then you'll be able to see me somewhere. Hello. I'm in a small box somewhere on the screen. Um, so today, for your maths lesson, we'll talk a little bit about moving shapes on a grid. Um, I think the start of the maths lesson today was to do some seven times table practice and look at all these questions, these quick fire questions that you've got to do on the sheet. Uh, seven times something equals 14, seven times something equals zero, seven times something equals 28. So you really have to use your seven times table knowledge there to try and get through those questions as quickly as you can. Okay, it's good to practice your times tables. I do it all the time. Now, um, the next thing that you'll see on your sheet is about moving shapes on a grid. And I thought I'd show you a little bit about that, how to do it. So today, uh, we're going to be looking about describing the movement of an object on a grid. Um, and for the first few slides that I'm going to share with you, I've got this small grid that you can see here. It's got on the x-axis, zero through to six. There we go, bit of a wobbly line, sorry about that. And then the y-axis going from zero up to six as well. There we go. And then we've also got this sort of purple square. And I'll show you, look, it's moving around moving all over the place. But we'll talk about how to describe its movement in just a second. So when you do translation, when we talk about an object moving around the grid, look, there we go, there's the square moving around. Um, the, the object, the shape doesn't change size. So when this square moves around this grid, it doesn't become a different size square. It's still the same old square that you've known for so long. It's the same type of square, same size. It doesn't turn or twist, it doesn't do any of this business, it doesn't turn or twist, it just stays exactly the same as it did before, uh, when, before it moved, okay? Now, what you do is, uh, to help you understand it moving around the grid, is just to know that it can't go diagonal as well, it kind of moves left or right, from side to side, and then it goes up or down. OK, so even though this arrow is pointing diagonally, uh, it doesn't move diagonally. It goes from left to right, side to side and then up or down. OK, uh, generally speaking, we go side to side first because in coordinates, as you'm sure you remember, the X axis goes first, the side to side, the X axis and then the up and down, the Y axis goes next. OK, so let's say, for example, that you wanted to move this square from here, here we are, uh, to here. Well, how would you describe its movement? Well, to do that, you only really need to focus on one point of the object to describe the whole object's movement or translation. Uh, in this instance, I've drawn a little pink square here uh, in the top right corner of my square, okay? And that way, I can just focus on this point and say, well, this point is the same as this point, but it's moved. Well, how much has it moved? And then you're able to count, okay? Count across, side to side first, the x-axis. So let's do that. Let's, I tell you what, let's get a pen and that'll make it a bit clearer. So we're working out how far, how would we describe the movement of this purple square all the way across to get to this space here. What's its movement? And to do that, we're focusing on a single point of the square to help us count. So this, this point here would go one, two, three across, three to the right, okay? And then it would have to go one, up. So the way it's moved, 
three to the right, one, two, three, and one up. And that's how we'd describe the movement of this square. And it would be the same for any point on this square. So this point here, the bottom left, let's do a different color so you can see it. Let's do, uh, let's get blue, a dark blue. So the bottom left corner of the square, three to the right, one, two, three, and then one up. And then we'd get to the bottom left of the square again. So that's how we describe its movement. Now today, the first activity you've got to look at, let's clear up the screen a little bit so you don't have to see all this stuff. Um, let's close this down. Dot of right. Let's get this out here. Oh, here we go. Look at that. Now we're now we're cooking with gas. So the first activity you've got uh, proper today on your math sheet it says look at the planet on the grid. And here's a little planet, looks a little bit like Saturn, and it's on the grid. So you have to work out its current coordinates. Well, let's do that together right now. Uh, let's look at the X axis and then the Y axis and write in the proper coordinates. And you can do this on your sheet with us. Uh, so the X axis, it's one along, it's one along, and then it's one up. So it's current coordinates are one, one. Now it says here, the question says, it was translated to the spot four, five, four, five. So it's asking you, can you plot the planet's new position into the grid? Well, I guess I could draw a little planet on the grid or I, I could do it just a dot or an X just to make it a bit easier. Um, so four, five, this is the X axis, four, and the Y axis, five. Let's have a look. One, two, three, four on the x-axis, four to the right, let's go five up. One, two, three, four, and five, and it would be just there. There we go. So it's moved from one, one, just here, all the way to four, five. Well, okay. So the following sentence says, the planet is translated what, left or right, and what, up or down, to the new coordinate, four, five. Okay, so I, if I take one, one, and I'm gonna count on to see where I've got to, and then count up to see where I get up to as well. So I'm gonna go on the x-axis, gonna count one, two, three. So it's gone three to the right, I'm gonna write down three. Then I'm gonna cross out left, I don't need it. Three right, and how many up? One, two, three, and four. And four up. Cross out down, don't need it just now. And that's answering the question, okay? So we've described the shape, in this case a planet, its translation from one, one to four, five. And it moved three to the right and four up. Now the next one are these lovely shapes. We've got stars, a heart, a triangle, and an X, okay? Now, what we're gonna do here, if we look here, we've got triangle to X is the first question. So the triangle from here to here. If we translated that triangle across and down to the X, what would we have moved? Okay, so we would have had to say, well, how many squares would we move to the right? And how many squares would we move down to get to the X? Then the next one says, the heart is translated left and right and up and down to the star. So start on the heart. The star's our finishing place. How many squares left would you go? Because it's left in this case. And then how many squares down would you go to get to where the star is? Okay and carry on like that triangle to heart is the next one and star to x is the next one as well how many to the right how many up and just remember it's always x axis side to side first and then y okay now the next part of the lesson here we go we're back in space everyone how exciting so 
There's more questions like this. So we've got a grid here, a six by six grid. We've got the moon, it looks like the sun, uh, a space station, an astronaut, a meteorite, and I'm not sure what that is. It might be a portable hoover, uh, but it's probably to do with space in some way. So let's just assume it's space. Um, so the first one says the moon is translated something and something to the sun. So look at where the moon is. It's just there. If I draw a little dot in the center of the moon and we're going to go to the center of the sun again, we're going to say how many to the right and how many up. And then from the sun, it's going to go to the meteorite. And again, we're going on the X axis first. So how many to the left in this case and then how many up? Carry on and finish those questions to the best of your ability. Uh, and then the final part of today's lesson is, is uh, these two lovely rectangles, A and B. We've got shape A is translated something, right or left, and then something up or down to shape B. And they've done a, a point on the shape, so it makes it easier for us to count. And it says shape B, what if that moves to where shape A is? How far left would it go? How far up would it go? And then once you've filled in those translations, you might be able to notice something. So write down what you notice. OK, so I hope that helps with each part of the maths lesson today. Um, start with the quick questions, the seven times tables. Have a go at this first task with the planet on the grid and then move through the shapes, the solar system and then the rectangles. I hope you do all right. I hope you get on. There is an answer sheet for you to look at afterwards, afterwards. Um, and then you should be OK to be really successful in this maths lesson. Good luck. All the best. And uh, I'll see some of this on Google Classroom. Take care. Bye bye.